Hey, how's it going? Today, I wanted to talk about some weird stuff that this Gen Loss Mark II is doing. And to be completely fair, you're not buying this pedal for the pristine clarity of what you send through it. I mean, it is called Generation Loss, after all. It's kind of in the name. And on top of that, Chase Bliss, Chase, Chase Bliss, Chase Bliss can probably come out with a pedal that turns itself off once in a while, and they could say it's by design, and I'm sure it would still sell out. So. Anyway, when I was really trying to explore this pedal as much as I could, I wanted to run some drums through it, which I thought would be cool. So that's kind of what we got going on here. Um, I also ran my synthesizer through it and stuff. We talk about that a little later on. Feel free to jump around with the chapters down below in case you're interested. So listen to this. couple things. It interestingly robs a ton of bass, and maybe this is due to the fact that this is a guitar pedal and it can't handle a lot of low end. At least the signal when set to line level like it is now is still clean, so you can just add an EQ and post and bring back some of that bass, but it's just something to note. For example, listen to this. This is uh, without the pedal here. Booming. But check this out. I'll turn the pedal off. And then we'll turn this on. This is just dry going through the pedal. Nothing's being affected here. Not going through the pedal. Going through the pedal. But I bet it sounded pretty decent before I even explain that, right? Because that's kind of what happened to me. When I was messing around with this on the synthesizer, I didn't notice it at all. It was only when I started running the drums through it that I realized that it had such a huge low cut to it. And the reason I wanted to put this on my drums is because you get this like weird dry switch, which is 50% loud or 100% loud of whatever the dry signal is. And then you have a volume knob that sets the affected signal. So What's cool here is if I find the model that I like, watch, we'll turn this all back on, turn this on, turn all this stuff down. Right now, all we're listening to is the affected signal going through these different models, right? But the one that I want is right here called Dictaphone. And they don't sound too different right now because I have the filter opened up all the way. If I turn this off, that's the real Dictaphone. It's right here around one o'clock as well as two o'clock. There's a bunch of different models in here, all the way to just off. Or you have reel to reel, which is another one of my favorites. But what I wanted to show you here is, I thought this would be kind of cool for mixing, is if you go to the dictaphone, really tinny, and we start really pushing it up with some saturation. Cool, let's turn the volume of the affected signal all the way down and turn up our dry. Dope, right? Let's start bringing some of that in. But another weird thing you might be hearing is that the signal sounds like it's doubled or tripled. And again, I don't know if this was by design. Maybe this is how some of the models of tape are made, right? And this is what tape does in the real world. I would have to guess that because when I turn the pedal off, the doubling is gone. And if I turn the pedal on, the doubling's there, even with the dry signal set to off. Watch, let's just listen to some percussion right now. So if we just listen to this, we'll turn dry off and we'll turn our filter all the way up. Here it sounds like it's doubled. It's like, prum, 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 prum. but if I turn this off, it's that single percussion again. And this is for all the models. Is it even with it off? Weird, it's even with it off. Let's try reel to reel. Yeah, it's always there. And if you bring in the dry, you start getting this weird rolling triplet. This is with no uh, dry signal.
I mean, it's way too intense, right? Again with it off. And then again with the pedal completely off. You get all that bass, everything. And similarly to the bass getting cut, I didn't realize this when I was messing around on my synthesizer and the gen loss, but I did when I was running drums through it. Will this change uh, my idea for processing drums through something like this? No, I actually kind of like the texture. It makes the drum sound a little more full in a weird way, but I know that this weird phasing can annoy some people because I've seen it down below before. Um, so my favorite thing, of course, is just dial back the volume a little bit and just give it a little bit of a kiss of this effect. So um, yeah, like for example, let's run it on a master. Let's bring all these elements in um, and see what this sounds like. We'll kick that back on. Chill, right? So for this one, I'm gonna put it on this model. I forget what model this is. We'll turn this on. So now we're mixing. You can already hear that phasing. We're running in stereo. And also let me say that this happens whether it's in mono or stereo mode. But right now we're in stereo mode. All the dip switches are up, AKA off. Sounds like this. All right, start saturating this a bit. What's cool is this filter. So this filter basically just slowly opens up or closes down to whatever the model is. So if we go to Dictify, which is here, we don't really hear it that much, but if I press this, you can hear it kind of phase into there. I wish there was a way to kind of move this filter back and forth. There is a way to kind of mess around with the filter and that's going into uh, classic mode. And actually low key, classic mode is kind of my favorite thing because you get low pass, high pass, the generation loss, how much like uh, is gone basically. And then your flow, your flow, your flutter and your wow, wow. Wow, okay. So check this, we'll run the whole thing through here. And that doubling is still kind of there, but we have our generation. We can push this all the way far down. All the way to basically nothing. And this is, again, just listening to the affected signal. And what's cool here is if we still have this auxiliary set to move the filters, if we have this set to something kind of crazy, we can turn it on, opens it back up, turn it off. It'll close down to where these are set. A little bit of wow in there for the synth. Maybe some of the dry, but then you get that trip length, that crazy phase. But listen to this without this stuff on just the synth. Like that sounds dope. I am all about that. And speaking of, let's just run this through the synthesizer here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop all this and I'll just put this on our handy dandy peak. Classic Ricky T move. Uh, That's it right there. Just a little bit. Let's go back out of this into regular mode. Dude, listen to that. This reverb is coming from peak. If I turn all the effects off on peak, turn our fail failure up. some flutter, some wow. Change our uh, model. Let's go back to Dictaphone. Right here, let me get situated. But if you throw in a little bit of reverb in there, game over. Only the affected signal. So you hear all those crazy dropouts. You can actually uh, change this on the dip switches. I believe it's hum, uh, snags, and I forget what the last one is. Uh, 
what is that? Drops, right? So hum, snags, and drops for your failure rate. And I really do like the failure knob. If we go to the reel-to-reel -reel one and we just listen to a single note, if I turn this up, you can hear it just kind of messes it up a little bit. There's just some cracks and pops and things like that. But this also, with those dip switches down, removes the hum, which is annoying to me. Snags, those are kind of cool, but I get enough movement with the wow. So same thing, let's turn the wow up. And then flutter is almost like a quicker wow. More nervous. And then of course there's saturation. But then you got your signal noise. And you can actually adjust the level of this. So it's always gonna be there. If I hold these two down and hold our flutter, this is our signal noise. Bring it down here. And same with all those crackles and pops for our failure rate, you do the same thing, just move the failure knob. So check this out, we'll key latch this, right? There's a little bit of flutter in here. I'll turn this on, of course. Now let's bring in some dry. You get this randomized chorus because you still hear the dry signal and then the pitch is moving on the affected signal, especially if we go to full. Again, no effects on peak. Turn flutter down. Let's go back to our dictaphone. Volume down. Failure down. There's also this model, my favorite right here, right around 11 o'clock. Little bit of reverb on here. Key latch off. Let's go deeper. Let's do some mod envelope. Let's push it. You know what, I'm gonna turn Snags back on. Snags is actually kind of cool, but you'll hear what I mean by like, it can get a little too much. Watch, I'll play a single note. Turn all these down, saturation down. Open up our filter. Hear that? That, that's a snag. But I guess with the filter down, you don't hear it as much. And then you bring in the dry. Let's really push this. Let's turn dry off. Failure back down a little bit. Yo, what the hell was that? I have no clue what that was. <laughs> I don't know if that was peak or this. Let's listen to this without the pedal. Pretty clean signal of just weird alien sounds, right? No effects. Turn this on. Yo, it is this. That sounds cool.
you back to reality. Here's a preset I made, in case you're wondering. This is kind of a sound I like. A little bit of dropped outs, a little bit of movement, right? And then here's the other preset I made. I also like this one too. A little dirtier, a little crunchier. Bring some of the dry. Saturation. You can hear those undertones kind of coming in. this. Just a kiss. Right, let's go full crazy. That's pretty. Save that preset. Yeah, somebody sampled this. What I'm talking about, I should sample this. Anyway, my hands are getting cramping. I appreciate you coming by. Thanks so much for kicking it. As always, if you uh, enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could hit that like button down below. But if not, it's all good. You kicking it is more than enough. Anyway, this pedal's dope. I love it, along with all my other, you know, random Chase Bliss pedals that I keep around this studio. And um, yeah, I guess, quick word on this. It's pretty good, still using this. This is a million times more than this, plus it's stereo, this isn't, but this thing still has something special inside of it. I'm not getting rid of this thing. And uh, anyway, yeah, appreciate you, my friend. Until next time, you already know the drill, share the love, share the knowledge, knowledge is power, peace. Now let's take this to infinity and beyond. Oops, wrong one.